Hi, and many thanks for joining me and a big welcome to any new subscribers that are watching. I hope you're all keeping safe and well and have had a very good week. This is a milestone for me as this is my 200th vlog that I've published. This is a milestone for me as this is my 200th vlog that I've published. Unbelievable. If you told me three years ago that I would quickly publish 200 videos, I would not have believed you. So today I'm going to talk about how it started, <laughs> why it started, did I want to start in fact. I first looked at buying a boat about 15 years ago. I was looking ahead at that time. <laughs> I wasn't planning to buy one then, but um, I discounted it at the time. But six years ago, as retirement was sort of looming, I reviewed the whole situation and I decided that I would buy a boat. And I started doing a lot of research I was reading books, watching videos, all sorts of things. And around that time, David from Cruise in the Cup started doing his vlogs. And he started at Yelvertoft Marina, where I'm based. I was watching other boat tubers, as we're known as well. And I was trying to glean as much information about narrow boating as I could as I'd never done it before. And before I made the final decision to purchase a boat, I actually hired a boat for a weekend. My first vlog was actually about the survey I had done on the boat. I didn't actually film the survey itself, but I did film around the boat and the boat going into the water at that time. I'd actually had the survey carried out on the 15th of December 2017 and it was March 2018 when I published it. In those early days I did think a lot about whether I wanted to have a YouTube channel and I was very uncertain. Whilst I'd always been in a public facing sort of environment I had never spoken to camera before and so it was a rather difficult and awkward experience if you haven't done it. <laughs> Not long now to the lock. This will be my first solo lock and I'm really looking forward to it. At the time of the survey I was actually still working. I did retire in April in 2018 but I was able to use up annual leave and bank leave and my last day of work was actually in the first week of January 2018. So having bought the boat, I then had to move it up to Yelvertoft Marina. I did that with a friend on a very wet day. <laughs> couldn't believe it. We did it over a weekend actually. <laughs> it was awful, absolutely awful, but nevertheless enjoyable. I have always made films for my own records. I've taken a lot of video over the years. I still have so much that is unedited. But I was uncertain about whether to go full hog and have a YouTube channel. Eventually I decided I would go for it. It was a bit of a slow start, 
but having filmed the survey happening and then having filmed a little bit coming up through Watford Locks and that I did decide that yes a channel was for me <laughs> not really knowing what was to come and it is hard work I will tell you that now <laughs> there's a lot goes into it it doesn't matter who you are or at what stage you are with your filming you do need to be dedicated to it my channel has included all types of videos not just cruising I've done DIY I've done road trips walking trips boat talks all manner of different things I've looked at pumping stations windmills <laughs> It's quite a varied channel and I think people do like that variety and I'm happy to give you that variety. I'm not a continuous cruiser, I am based in a marina and so I can't bring you something fresh every time on the cruising front. The first DIY video I produced was all about replacing the inserts in my side hatch. These were rotten and I couldn't close and lock the side hatch properly <laughs> so that was the very first job I tackled and I actually filmed that with my phone. I wasn't very well prepared in those early days and in the course of filming the phone went flat, <laughs> a bit of a disaster but I was able to produce something which was rather pleasing at the time. <laughs> Following on from that I filmed the Crick Boat Show in 2018. I was very pleased with how that came out. Got some very nice comments on that one. At this time I wasn't using particularly good equipment. I was using a small Canon camera and a Canon compact camera as well. Both of which were giving reasonable results but I needed to get some better equipment but that was to be a long while coming. After the Creek Boat Show I made my first proper solo cruise which included a lock. <laughs> yes, I went up to the Welford Arm where there is a single lock. That was a most enjoyable cruise. The one thing I remember is that the Welford Arm seemed to be fairly shallow. I recall the boat scraping along the bottom of the canal. <laughs> but as I say, very enjoyable. When I had the survey done, the surveyor suggested that I get the boat blacked. Not just the sides of the boat, but the underside as well. And the only place to have that done was Debdale Wharf which is just north of Foxton Locks. So I booked it in there for July, early July, and I took the boat up there to have it blacked. They've got a gantry with a hoist there and they were able to lift the boat sufficiently high to get the job done. And I was very pleased with the job they did. After that we had a little bit of fun and frivolity at the Crick Scarecrow Festival. I'd never heard of it before but I took a walk down to Crick and did some filming. So that was something slightly different and certainly not cruising. <laughs> Then in August 2018 I did my first major cruise with a friend down to Banbury. I must say when I look back at the episodes I produced the presentation was rather bland. 
to say I wasn't used to speaking to camera. It has now stopped raining fortunately. It did get rather heavy at one point. But let's hope we don't get much more of it. And there was a bit of friction on board between me and my friend. And to me that definitely showed. <laughs> I could see it when I was speaking. Part of the reason for that was that I would repeat myself until I got it reasonably correct. And I was told, why do you keep saying the same thing over and over? Well, I was doing my best to present myself as well as I could. And I don't think I achieved it, to be honest with you. But friction on board didn't help. We had a bit of a ding-dong with another boat just now as we came round the bend. We did sound our horn. As we came round, we saw the boat. It didn't slow down at all. And unfortunately, the stern of our boat hit the bank did later on, some while later, split up. But it was my first proper cruise. I thoroughly enjoyed the cruising aspect, going down to Banbury, went through many locks and so forth, did the Napton flight and other flights on the way down, and it was most enjoyable. One of the other things the surveyor had recommended to do on the boat was to clean the water tank. water is very clear and I can see right to the bottom of the tank. There's certainly a lot of silt down there but I have the impression it's going to clean up fairly well. Now I actually did this in July 2018 doing some very hot weather but I didn't publish it until November. <laughs> but I was very fortunate with the hot weather because it allowed the tank to dry out quickly and I treated it with a specialist coating that is designed for potable water systems. But I was 10 days doing that. The specification sheet recommended you allow seven days for the treatment to dry out. I only allowed five days because it was so hot the week that I did it. Then I refilled the tank and that's proved quite a popular video. It let's people know what they're in for if they're going to do that task. So <laughs> that was a bit of a success, that one, I think. And later that year, in November, Watford Locks, which are about four miles from where I'm based at Yelvertoft, were closed for winter repair works. And they were closed for about six weeks and I made three films of that. I think I visited six times and each film shows two different occasions that I visited. These pounds were full of water when I visited two days ago, but as you can now see, they have been emptied. Again, I'm still getting used at this time to speaking to camera. I hadn't developed the style of being cheerful and chatty, as many of you will know from the last year and more. So it was a big learning curve for me and it took some while to get used to talking to you like I am now and being cheerful about it. But I did get there and I think it helped with the channel People started calling me Mr. Smiley, or the man with the laughing face, and all, all sorts of things, and that was very welcome indeed. <laughs> I did at last feel that I was doing something right. And then I published a crazy bike ride that I'd taken down the Kyan Hill Locks on the Kennet and Avon Canal. I'd actually filmed that in 2011 when I'd made a visit there. I stopped overnight in my camper van. It wasn't a very nice day, we had a lot of rain that day and there weren't many people about. And I was riding my bicycle down the towpath. <laughs> Hadn't really thought about filming, but I thought I'd film just a couple of locks on the move as it were. 
and I finished cycling the whole length of the locks. Unbelievable. And I hadn't set the camera up in any way. I was holding the handlebars with one hand and the camera with the other, and away I went. And people did get out of the way as I came along. <laughs> that was quite amazing. So take a look at that one if you haven't yet seen it. It's uh, quite an interesting one. It's, it's a quick one and it's a bit of fun. In September 2018, I visited the Royal Ordnance Depot at Weedon Beck. This was during a Heritage Open weekend. That's a weekend, it's now actually a two weekend event with all the days in between when a lot of places are open for the public to visit lots of heritage type properties which don't normally open to the public open up and other attractions museums and other visitor centers lay on special events and i had visited the uh, the royal ordnance depot that weekend and i had a good mooch around <laughs> you can go there any time actually it's now a sort of small business centre, there are warehousing there, offices, retail, there's a little museum there as well which had only just opened at the time I visited or just been modernised I think. That video I think is very interesting. The Royal Ordnance Depot was built in the early 1800s in preparation for invasions from the French and it was sited inland so as to be as far away from coastal areas as possible and it hasn't proved a very popular video the depot was connected to the canal at Weedon there was an arm that came off the Grand Union Canal had reached Weedon in 1796 and by 1806 the wharf and the canal spur into the depot had been completed Behind me is where the arm to the Royal Ordnance Depot branched off the Grand Union Canal. It is now at the end of a cul-de-sac of modern houses. It's a very interesting and historical site, so I would encourage you to take a look at that one. There were ammunition depots there, a lot of history there on a site that's 200 years old and is canal related. So please think about looking at that one. I've been disappointed, I think, over the years well, with the numbers that uh, have looked at that. <laughs> Can't win them all, I suppose. <laughs> In May 2019, I visited London and attended the Inland Waterways Association Canal Cavalcade at Little Venice. That was a very nice day. We did have some rain later on, I seem to recall, but in the morning it was a lovely day. I got some good shots there of the boats and so forth. So I was able to bring you something very different and not local, so I was very pleased about that. In June 2019 and into July, I made the longest cruise that I've made so far when I went to the Ashby Canal. But before going, I was unhappy with the condition of the boat. <laughs> And so I did some painting and in the end I did a series of painting videos there were ten in all in that first series spread out over many many months but initially I just wanted to improve the appearance of the boat I did make it clear at the time that I wasn't teaching anyone how to paint their boat I was just showing you what I was doing to improve its general appearance and I have since had another go at doing the sides. I'm still not happy with the overall finish. My intention at some stage, I don't know that it will be this year, but my intention is to spend more time and do each side separately. 
I've tended to go down to the slipway, work on the boat, get as much done as quickly as possible. And I can assure you that is not the best way to paint a boat. You do need to take your time, particularly when you're working in the open, because there's no cover here where you can work on your boat. And I intend to look at that again, but I did produce a series of painting videos <laughs> adding to the DIY trend as part of my variety that I like to give everyone. I had some glorious weather on the actual cruise to the Ashby Canal. Absolutely fantastic. There was the odd layover day when there was rain, but on the whole, it was a delightful cruise. I thoroughly enjoyed it. This looks very tight to me. September 29 I tackled the problem of my shower tray. When I bought the boat a new shower tray had been fitted but I had inadvertently stepped on the corner where the outlet was and broke the tray. I had done a temporary repair, stepped on it again, <laughs> broke it again. And then you can see here the flexibility where I've trodden on it and broken it. The original fitting that had been done wasn't that good. I managed to source a manufacturer of shower trays. Mine is just a pressed acrylic one, three millimeters deep. I found a manufacturer and I asked them to cut the border to the size that I needed. So it had a nice square cut around it and I set forth <laughs> doing that task. It was a long job and it was the longest video I think that I ever produced at 45 minutes odd. It was just less than 45 minutes. And I showed how I went about taking out the old shower tray. I had to source new tiles to go around the bottom of the tray and cut them. There was a lot of work involved. I can't say I particularly enjoyed the task, but I was very, very satisfied with the outcome. Delighted with how that appeared. <laughs> so, pleased with that job again, yeah. And then came the stove and flue clean. It wasn't something I had thought about doing. I did it because I'd seen someone else do it. And it made me realize that it had to be done. And I bought a long stove brush to push down whilst I was stood on the roof. <laughs> And I pushed it up and down, a lot of bits came out and I did a reasonable job cleaning it. The stove end was rather messy because I found a part inside the stove that shouldn't have been there. The part that I found had actually broken away, it shouldn't have been there and I didn't replace it. I don't believe this part is actually needed. I mentioned earlier that I hired a narrowboat for a weekend. I had a friend with me at that time. It was my first narrowboating experience and I decided that I should make a video of it. I had done some filming on the boat, not very successfully because whilst the camera had been mounted on a tripod <laughs> The tripod was on some loose decking in the bow of the boat and the film was a bit shaky. But I had enough film to make quite a good video, at least I thought it was good, <laughs> explaining my early experiences. And a lot befell us that weekend, not of our own making. We had been passing other boats on our journey and talking to other boaters at Lockside and so forth and were hearing tales that there was a log in the tunnel 
and to be very, very careful. When we got to the Braunston flight, there was a few people gathered around the top lock and there was the log. And it was quite a sizable log and it was stopping the top gate, one of the top gates, from actually opening because it was butted up against it. And people were looking at it and not really knowing what to do about it. So I took the boat hook from my boat and just pulled it back out of the way. That's all we could do. And there was an incident at Lock 9 on the Buckby flight that I refer to. And anyone that is new to narrow boating or thinking of taking it up might like to look at that particular video because there were a lot of incidents that arose, all sorts of things, the log in the water, the tree across the canal, which was bending nicely and we cruised over it, but uh, all sorts of things happened and I documented those and well worth a view I would say. <laughs> As part of giving variety I have also filmed some pumping stations because these are water related because they're pumping water for a variety of reasons. Years ago pumping stations were built to pump water into canals from rivers some pumping stations are pumping water for sewage purposes, drainage purposes or they are pumping fresh water into towns and villages to give them a supply of water. But I did visit the Papawick pumping station on the outskirts of Nottingham. It was a bit of a wet day, we did have some brightness <laughs> but at the end of the day the heavens did open up and it had rained early in the morning. If you're interested in steam and power pumping stations, that's well worth taking a look at that one. I've also been to Crofton on the Kennet and Avon Canal. My Crofton film was taken many years earlier and I did eventually publish something, <laughs> which was good. I have also published two videos on purchasing my narrow boat and anyone that's thinking of buying a boat might like to look at those. I explained the research that I'd done beforehand, what I was looking for, certain things to look out for when you're buying a boat. I discussed the various types of toilet, the various types of rear end, if you'll excuse the expression, the trad, the semi-trad and the cruiser <laughs> and a whole host of different matters covered in those videos. So anyone interested, you might find it well worth taking a look at those. There were two in that series. And I've also published review videos, looking back. So in 2019, I published a review of 2018, looking at the things that went wrong or didn't go right. And likewise I did the same for 2019 but funnily enough I've not yet published a 2020 review <laughs> and whether I will I'm honestly not certain <laughs> it's something I should certainly think about though <laughs> in July 2020 I pranged my boat and I published a video about that in October I didn't think I should keep it a secret. Unfortunately, at the time of the incident, I was not filming, which was a shame. I would certainly have shown you what happened if I had it on film, but I did recount the tale and show you the repair that I affected. So that's something to look at. <laughs> I won't say if you like a laugh, but it was rather sad. It was in fact, I was very, very upset. There's no doubt about that. At the time of the incident, I smashed the glass in the cratch board, decided not to actually replace the glass because the cratch board on my boat, the bow is so short at the front and the glass is so close to any potential hazards. I decided to replace it with a, a board rather than a glass. It's a small cratch area. I don't sit out in it and I didn't see the need to retain the glass in the cratch board and the cratch board was damaged 
it would have involved having a whole new board professionally made up and so I took an easier option by getting a board cut which was done at Debdow Wolf and I was very pleased with what they did and I fitted it and affected the repair myself so another bit of DIY and another good job done from my point of view. In the first two years when I started the channel I produced a hundred videos and in the last year I produced a hundred videos as well which means my output doubled and it doubled during the Covid crisis and lockdown something which hit the world with dramatic effect in England it hit us in March last year when life virtually came to a standstill we didn't know what to expect or how long it would last at the time we certainly knew there was going to be inconvenience for two or three months and here am I in June 2021 18 months on still talking about it and we still have a bit of a lockdown scenario everyone knows what's happened so I'm not going to talk about that but during that period I started producing more videos they couldn't be cruising videos because for much of that time we were not allowed to cruise and instead of filming what I'd been doing just generally I was positively thinking of what can I film to show my viewers and I was getting lots of comments support and encouragement from you and it spurred me on to do that so we had a lot of boat life videos life in the marina walk videos when I was out in the van I took some camper van that is I took some film as well and you had a whole host of different things to keep you entertained <laughs> so thank you for sticking with me during that time and uh, liking the videos the driving videos or the road trip videos are certainly very popular with people overseas particularly in America Canada and Australia there are a lot of expats overseas who like to see the countryside and so forth it's a reminder to them of what it's like over here but we've all been through these very difficult and hard times it's nearly over for many of us and it will be good when it is be able to get out we can go out cruising now there's no bars on going cruising but as you know I am marina based I have a bigger cruise planned for later in the year I'm presently working on the Cosgrove series <laughs> well I'm now on the outskirts of Cosgrove and I'll be publishing that very shortly now so I'd like to thank everyone new and old subscribers shouldn't use the word old should I existing subscribers <laughs> For your support and encouragement it is very much appreciated thank you all so much for the lovely gifts that you've sent me I've been blown away by your kindness keep it coming won't you <laughs> but no I have really been well absolutely delighted pleased comforted call it what you like but uh, to have that support is absolutely marvellous. I've got a dedicated band of supporters. It means a lot to me. You're spread all over the world. You keep the comments coming. And I thank you all for that from the bottom of my heart. It really is much appreciated. Making videos has been my hobby for many, many years. And I intend to continue the rate of output will change there's no doubt about that I do need a break it has been hard going and it has taken a bit of a toll I have sort of temporarily run out of a bit of puff so <laughs> but the videos will keep coming once the Cosgrove series starts I'll be a little bit more relaxed 
I'll have time to get out and do some more filming for you in a more relaxed state I think and that will be good it'll be good for me and it'll be good for you so all I can say as I always say is look after yourselves your friends your families take the utmost care in whatever you're doing stay safe that's the most important thing difficult times are not fully over yet so beware in whatever you're doing look after yourselves many many thanks for watching your support is so much appreciated until next time <laughs> here it comes bye for now do you want to hear that one more time? <laughs> Take the utmost care. Bye for now. Look after yourselves.